with Kenny McPeak back in the uh, Annex Barn. Um, Kenny, you got Classic Causeway going today, cutting back a half a furlong. How's the horse been training? This is a really classy horse. Um, probably one of the nicer horses I've ever been around. I mean, his uh, his last race was amazing. Um, we're, we've been working on trying to teach him to relax a little bit and go a little further. Um, there's some speed on the inside of him today, and I think he'll rate off that speed. I think he'll relax today. Um, he's got some um, really tough competition, but you know, look, this is a really good colt, grade one winner now, and also um, several other graded stakes behind him, but um, real pleasure to be around. So the race came back very strong, uh, very good contenders in there. The turf has got, we've had a little moisture in the last couple of days. Any concern with the turf having a little more cut than when we were at Belmont where it was pretty dry? I think it might even help him. Um, he's just a big, powerful horse. He's run well on the dirt, so I don't think, whether it's a firm turf or a soft turf, I don't think it's gonna affect him too much, but he um, he uh, has done everything right, and uh, it's gonna be a, a fun next step for him. I'd love to think he can run through this triple, this uh, turf triple for three-year-olds up here, but um, it's a really cool horse. And last one for you, shorter distance. Any concern going to a little bit shorter here? Not particularly. You get a pretty good run to the first turn, then you can settle. Um, he's going to have to settle on the outside, it looks like, depending on how the speed unfolds inside of him. But um, he should handle that fine. And actually, I like him outside. It gives him a chance to stalk off horses as opposed to being inside where he kind of has to commit. So um, it's a good spot for him to be able to lay outside. Well, good luck to you and Julian today. Thank you. Here with Trevor McCarthy back at the Oklahoma training track. Trevor, I have to ask you, how did this all start? How did how did you decide to become a jockey? You know, I was born into it. My father was a jockey and uh, you know, at a very young age, I would say three years old, I was around the racetrack and I uh, just saw my dad and I wanted to follow in his footsteps and uh, here I am. So talk to me how that conversation goes with your mother. I That you want to be a jockey after your father was one. Was there any attention there or anything? Absolutely. You know, my father was all for it. You know, he saw how dedicated I was at a young age. And uh, my mother, on the other hand, didn't, you know, want to see me go down this road. And uh, it was always a big joke. You know, I, I would go around and people would ask me, hey, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would look at my mother and and I would kind of be like shy to say jockey, you know, and uh, came to the point where she was like, you know, what, you can you can go ahead and tell people, you know, you want to be a jockey. But she wanted me to go to college and uh, probably be a doctor or a lawyer of some sort but uh you know after she saw how dedicated I was even through uh, middle school and come high school and she kind of you know left me alone but you know even still you know she was just worried you know uh as any you know mother should be but uh you know she's proud of me talk to me about when, when did you first get up on a, a racehorse for the first time yeah I was getting on racehorses really young like five years old you know um just jogging them around the shed row my dad, he, I, you know, he was nuts. He was training at one point of, in his career, and uh, he would have me get on the kind of the horses that needed a little bit of a weight off, and uh, I would jog them in the shed row, and uh, it, you know, they were crazy ones, they were, you know, good ones, and uh, you know, he just had confidence in me, and at that young age, I wasn't scared, you know, and I, uh, I would get up on them and uh, jog them in the shed row, and those were my my earliest moments. So you had a, a tremendous success in the winter and your continuing success now. You've been traveling like crazy. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with your agent? I know your agent is Joe Migliori, um, who's also a bloodstock agent. He's uh, from a family of jockeys. So tell me about how you guys work together and, and what your guys' plans are. Yeah, we, you know, we hooked up, me and Joe, in, in the fall last year. And, uh, you know, we make a really great team. And uh, we've been doing a lot of traveling. And uh, we're just trying to work hard and, and keep continuing success. And uh, if that means we have to go out of town to ride for some of these trainers here in New York, you know, we'll, we, we'll do it. Um, you know, looking into the future, we're excited to get back um, to Belmont and, and Aqueduct, um, where we seem to have a little bit more business. And, uh, you know, we're, we finished second last year at the Aqueduct uh, went to meet. And uh, hopefully this year we can uh, give Dylan a run for his money. I have to ask you, family, it's definitely a family business, not only from vertically, but now, now we go horizontally. Um, what is it like being, uh, being in a, married to another jockey family? Yeah, you know, look, it's, uh, it's great in a way, and it's got, it's got its pros and cons, but, uh, you know, we all get along really good, and we have a lot of fun, and, you know, there's sometimes can be some tension, but, uh, 
you know, for the most part, everybody's uh, proud of one another and, uh, you know, we wish all, all each other the best. Is there any video review at the Thanksgiving table or anything like that or, or inquiries probably, possibly? You know, my brother-in-law, Eddie, he likes to stir stuff up between me and uh, Dylan, but... Uh, you know, for the most part, we just ignore them. <laughs> and lastly, for you, the, the rule seems to have changed, but they did have the Trevor McCarthy rule for a little while here in New York, the uh, the, the coupled entries rule. Oh, right. Um, it seems to have changed right now, but what did you feel about what, what was a little crazy when that was going on, huh? Yeah, I got to give my wife all the credit for that one. She, uh, she was really headstrong about getting that rule changed, and she did a lot of work with that. Um, and look, I mean, it, it's great it got changed, and maybe, you know, she wants to come back to riding at some point. She's out here now galloping and exercising horses, but I think at some point she does want to come back to race riding. Uh, at least, you know, he's giving it a good thought and, uh, you know, it'll it'll kind of be able to be a fair play now. Well, good luck with the rest of the 2022 meet. Thanks so much. Here with Tom Amos back in the, uh, in the grandstand, doing his morning work, uh, getting all his entries, watching the workouts. Tomorrow, your promise of hope going to the Adirondack. Horse broke its maiden first asking last time out at Churchill and nice maiden special weight. How's the horse been training? Very well. Um, I'm excited about tomorrow's race. It's a small field of six. Um, I, I think that the Lucas horse is the one to beat. I've run against him uh, in that filly's first start with a different horse named Holiday Decision. Both Holiday Decision and that Lucas horse came back to break their maids in their next start. So, you know, a, a, a really nice horse that I think will have the favoritism tomorrow but promise of hope just one start very professional in doing it i think she's looking to move forward so in the field of six that uh, is small field of six but in the field of six every other horse has ran longer than five furlongs promise of hope the only horse that ran five furlongs we're going at six and a half tomorrow any concern on stretching out here no i mean uh, she's by go sapper um this is the national pro the natural progression of what the two year races do as the summer goes on they start off in the beginning of the summer short and end up going further and further I'm very comfortable with the distance tomorrow. Last question for you here. Small field of six. Thought well, that race was going to come back a little bigger. Any comments on the field sizes of some of the stakes races so far this meet? Well, what maybe they've lacked in quantity, they certainly have you know, made up for it in quality. These are really, really good races up here. And, you know, we're going to see that again today in the Whitney. And uh, it, it's just a pleasure to watch these kind of horses run. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And good luck tomorrow. Thank you.